We're Pastor Jerry and Julie Jenkins, Addiction Free in Christ, a ministry of miracles, a ministry without walls and boundaries. In fact, it's a threefold ministry. First of all, helping people receive salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Secondly, helping people receive deliverance from the slavery of addiction. And thirdly, helping people receive he healing in their spirit, mind, soul, and body. And this is what we doing today, Julie. This is the Winter 2023 Addiction Seminar. And it's also for year 2024, brought to you by CTNWTJR TV 16, and also by Addiction Free in Christ, both in Quincy, Illinois. And today we're going to be talking about addictions and the difference between recovery and deliverance. And the reason why is because 96,700 people passed away from overdose, drug overdose per year in America, and 140,000 die from excessive alcohol use. 72% of the drug overdose are from opioids, and over about approximately 1 million drug overdose happens since 1999. So we want to bring to you this information about the difference between recovery and deliverance and how Addiction Free in Christ programs differ from other programs. And Julie, there's a lot of different programs out there. Yes. There's a lot of wonderful programs out there. Yes. But our program is completely different. This is not a recovery program. No. And there's a lot of recovery programs and they help people stay sober one day at a line at a time, yeah, time yeah. but this this is completely different. We found years ago, how many years ago, been 30, uh, what's it been now? In January, it'll be 37, um, 37 years. Yeah, 37 years that we've been helping people find deliverance from the slavery of addiction. They're no longer in recovery. They are now delivered. There's a big difference there. Um, they don't have to go to a meeting once a week. They don't have to do the normal things that a lot of people do because we can work them through a process where the desire is totally taken away. Yes. Now, let me share just something about that. I was a serious alcoholic until I was 51 years old. And it's a funny little story, actually. I walked in a church one Sunday morning to sell a pastor a Cadillac. I was a car salesman. And I went in and, and I sold him the Cadillac that morning, but he sold me Jesus. Now the Cadillac, it's, it's all worn out and it's in some junkyard somewhere and been crunched up. But Jesus Christ is still alive and well and at the right hand of the Father interceding for me in my prayers and everything I do. And at that point, when I left that church, I was delivered. I went back to work and about one day went by and two days went by and three days went by and all of a sudden I thought, I haven't smoked a cigarette. I haven't taken a drink of alcohol. This guy's got something. And I went right back to that church and I knocked on the door, the pastor's door, and I said, I gotta tell you something, buddy. You got something here. Because I've been totally set free. And he explained to me how the word of God delivered me. It's the most exciting thing that ever happened might happen. Well, what happened at that point, we started programs back years ago. We started out, our first program was New Wine Ministry. And we ran that for several years. And then we, we was just working with people with alcohol. And we all of a sudden, we, this had been way, way back. All these people started coming in with drug addiction. And we thought, well, we gotta help these people too. And so we started researching drugs. But it's the same answer, Jesus Christ is the only thing that will save you, deliver you, and heal you. And we started working through the programs. What else have we done, Julie? Well, um, we've done, uh, we have aftercare programs and outpatient programs through our, our uh, ministry. Also, we offer the, uh, these uh, ministry videos and addiction seminars like the one you're watching today. And many people stay in recovery one day at a time working their program, which tells them to look to God as a higher power, or God as we know him. 
which can be anything, but the Addiction Free in Christ program is a total deliverance program based on God's Word. You see, the Bible talks about recovery three times, but deliverance 98 times. Our God is a God of salvation, deliverance, and healing. And why is that? Because Jesus said in John 8, 31 and 32, if you abide in my word, yes. you're my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus is our savior, our redeemer, and our soon coming king, and he's drawing you right now to himself. Okay, Julie, I want to ask you a question. It said, if you abide in my word, right? Yes. Okay, um, that means, don't we abide in the house? Yes. That means we're there every morning, and we're there yes. every night, right? Yes. We live in it. Right. Right. We're not just there once in a while. We live in it. Right. So let's go back to what we was talking about. If you abide in my word, right. that's the Bible. Right. That means if you live in that word, that doesn't mean, well, I'll take a look at that on Monday morning and that's supposed to take care of me through the week. That means every day I need to be going in God's word, studying God's word, because the only thing that will deliver a person is the Bible. That's the right. only thing to deliver a person is God's Word, yes. Jesus Himself, right? Because He is the Word of God. Right. Am I correct? So yes. That's a very important thing about deliverance. If, if for deliverance, you have to live in the Word of God and let the Word of God live in you. Amen? Amen. That's so Amen. powerful, Pastor Jerry. So that's what really makes a difference. Uh, first of all, Let's talk about salvation for a minute. Yes. Because I think this is the most misunderstood word in the Bible. Because a lot of times people say, if you just come down here and say this prayer, you're going to be saved. Right. There's nowhere in the Bible that says that. No. There's three interesting things I want to talk to you about right now on salvation. First of all, Jesus is speaking. And he said, no one come to me unless the Father draw them. Okay? Right. Then he said, secondly, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. Right. And appointed you to bear much fruit, and your fruit should remain. So I'm afraid that a lot of times people say, just come down here and say this prayer, and you're going to be saved. Nowhere in the Bible it says that. So let's stop and think about this again. First of all, to get delivered, you have to, be, you have to receive Jesus. Right. Okay? To receive Jesus, first of all, God has to draw you. Yes. Then secondly, Jesus has to choose you. Right. Okay, we know that God did draw us, everyone. There yes. wasn't anybody in the world that he didn't draw because he loves us all. Yes. And then Jesus chose us yes. because Jesus came and paid for our sins and died for us that we could spend eternity with him. Right. Okay, so God drew us, Jesus chose us, and then it was up to us when we had the opportunity to receive that gift whether yes. we receive it or not. Yes. And today, everybody has an opportunity to receive that gift. The problem is, most people today are so tied up in the world that they don't want to leave the world and receive that gift, where they'll have salvation, deliverance, and healing for the rest of their life. Amen? Amen. You know, the Bible says, they love not the world, neither things that are in the world. If the love of the world is in you, the love of the Father is not. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, these are not of the Father, but the world. And the world is passing away at the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Yes. And so that's what else you got there, That Jill? is so powerful. And this program was founded on John 14, 6. That yes. It says this. And Jesus is talking, right? Yes, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And um, the question is, how can you find G God if you're trying to um, go through a higher power? The only way to find God is to go through Jesus Christ, who is the only way to God the Father. So, and also the freedom that Jesus was talking about also is in John 8, 36. He says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, yes. you shall be free indeed. Yes. I became addiction free in Christ in, when I was 21 years old after I had been involved in alcohol and drugs throughout my teenage years. 
and God brought me to salvation through the witness of others who had also been involved in different problems and they found Jesus Christ was the deliverer, the one who made us whole and um, who made them whole and they drew me too when I was uh, when I was that young at 21 years old and God brought me to him. And then later on, I got involved with Pastor Jerry here and he mm -hmm. led me uh, into helping others through the teen program. I helped the teens. And then later on, yes. I came on board with Addiction Free in Christ. And then uh, off after that, we ended up, uh, we married in 1992. That's right. Of, of, uh, September 5th, 1992. And so we've been working in this ministry since then For the together. For 30 some years. Right. And Jerry's before that. So that means, but um, so the thing is, is I want to share with you that it is Jesus who brought me salvation, deliverance and healing. It's when I surrendered to him and I, all I did was say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you right now in your most holy name. I pray you forgive me my sins, deliver me from addiction. And, and that's exactly what God did. He delivered me. So there's, um, that's, that's when I received the gift of salvation, deliverance and healing through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's called being born again. Amen. But what does born again mean? Jesus said in John 3, 5 through 8, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of the water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said that you must be, be born, born again. again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. And the reason why is because then from then on, God controls your life. The Holy Spirit controls your life. So he, he sends you here, there, or wherever he wants you to be. It's no longer you trying to struggle in your own flesh and your own addictions. It's God setting you free completely and replacing all of it with his very own self. Hey, let me help you with it just a minute on that, I'm being born again. A lot of people, they don't, they don't understand it. Yeah. Because it's a spiritual Experience. thing. Experience. It's a spiritual thing. You're, you're going to have a new spirit, okay? Uh, because they, your old spirit was driven by the world, by the enemy. Right. Okay? But what happens is when you're born again, you die to your selfish, sinful nature. Yes. And God puts his, oh, this is awesome. Yes. When you're born again, God actually takes his Holy Spirit and puts it inside of you. Yes. And so then the Holy Spirit's constantly guiding you into all the things you need to do, all, all the, the proper things. And he also, he puts the Holy Spirit in you, which he will also tell you, you don't want to do this. You, you know, you don't want to go there because that, the enemy will try to set a trap for you. Yes. And when you have the Spirit of God in you, that's being born again, then the Holy Spirit guides you into all truth. And he warns you about places you don't want to go. Right, and and he delivers us from uh, alcohol, drugs, tobacco, smoking addiction, gambling addiction. He can deliver you, you from it all. But Jesus uh, is explained also in John 1, 12 through 13. It says, as many as received him, that's Jesus and yes. the Holy Spirit, to them he gave right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So you actually are born of God when you surrendered your life to Jesus. And you have God's DNA, not a, not a, a physical DNA anymore, because you're not born of, of human blood anymore. You're born from above. I like something Romans says. Romans 6, 16 says this. Do you not know whom you present yourselves slaves to obey? You're that one's slave who you obey, whether sin leading to death right. or obedience leading to righteousness. Now, wait a minute. That sin leading to death, what does that mean? That means spending an eternal, eternity in a hell. That's right. In, a, in, the, in the fire of hell right. for eternity. Right. Most people today, a lot of times, churches won't talk about hell. But the, the facts are, here's what we got to understand, period. 
There's a real heaven and there's a real hell. There's a real God and there's a real devil. Yeah. And until we surrender our life to Jesus Christ, we're on our way to a burning hell. Yes. Now, a lot of churches don't want to preach on that today because that's pretty heavy and that's pretty scary. But that's the facts. Yes. That's where I was going one day in my yeah. life. Yeah. I was going 100 mile an hour right straight for hell yeah. until God saved me, delivered me, and healed me and set me free from eternity in a burning hell. And that's what we got to understand as yes. addiction. I don't care if it's alcohol, other drugs, sexual, pornography, addiction, eating this more, order, smoking addiction, whatever it is, gambling addiction, that is the enemy controlling our mind, controlling our soul. And that, that's the enemy trying to take us as far away from God as he can. Mm -hmm. The thing of this, we got to remember, remember this, we're God's children. God loves us more than anything else in the world. And, and God wants us to live for him. And God wants us to go to heaven and spend eternity with him. One thing I love about that, it's, there's a verse in the Bible I love so much because I really enjoy it. I'm looking forward to it. And it says, uh, let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus is speaking. Okay. If you let not your hearts believe troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you will be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said, Lord, Lord, we don't know how you're, where you're going. How are we going to know the way? And Jesus made the most powerful statement in the Bible, where he said, I am, Jesus is speaking, where I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's only one way to heaven, only one way to eternity with, with Jesus, only one way to eternity with God. And that's when we will stop, surrender our life, and receive that free gift that God gave us and Jesus gave us, where God drew us to Jesus and Jesus chose us. Then it's up to us whether we want to go on living the life we were living before, or if we wanted to go on and surrender our life to Jesus, and then he says, now listen to this, when you do that, Jesus says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. That means from that time on, God puts his own spirit inside of you, the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. He will warn you of things to come. He will tell you of things you should do and things you shouldn't do. And then he protects us. Then Jesus is with us. Now listen to this. Jesus is with us 24-7, 24, seven, 24 hours a day, yes. seven days a week. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Yes. Then if some friend comes by sometime, that you used to hang out with, you used to drink with, or smoke with, or whatever, come by and say, hey, well, let's go do this or that. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, is living right inside of you, where he'll say, no, we don't want to go there. And he'll just say to you, we don't need to do that anymore, because I've already bought and paid for you, Jesus says, with, your, with my precious blood. You've got a home in heaven. There's no use you want to go back there right. because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You know, doesn't it talks about that? I'm thinking about where it says, yeah. um, in one of the scriptures, they're talking about where, uh, it's in Proverbs somewhere, but that's okay. What else you got, Well, Julie? the devil comes to kill, steal, Healing and destroy, destroy. but yes. Jesus says, I came that you may have life and yeah. life more abundantly. Yes. He's the anecdote. Yes. To all these problems, and also Matthew 28, 18, uh, Jesus tells us about his authority that he yes. has. He yes, has I authority love. over anything, yes. any addiction, any loved one who's struggling with addiction through intercessory prayer. He's got all authority. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
teaching them to serve all that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So Jesus is with us always, and he has all authority over these things. This is my very favorite verse in the Bible. How much authority, Julie? All. All authority. There's nothing in the world that can come against you today that Jesus doesn't have authority over. And the other thing is there's a secret to, I think, one of the secrets to really living an a addiction-free life is learning to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because mm -hmm. Jesus put His Spirit, or God put His Spirit inside of you to guide you into all truth. And if we'll just surrender our life to Jesus Christ, God will do the work, mm -hmm. the rest. It's not, it's not what we're going to do. It's what He's going to do through us. Over the last many years that you and I have been delivered, set free, it's not what we did. Right. It's what God did through us. First of all, God drew us to Jesus. Jesus chose us. And then Jesus set us free. Then it was up to us whether we wanted to stay free or not. Amen? Amen. Then we had a choice to make, whether we wanted to live for God the rest of our life and happiness and peace and God. You know, we're children of God and God loves us. And most people don't understand that. No, most people don't understand how much God loves His children right. and what He will do for them. And, but we got to learn to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Yeah. Lean not to our own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. And that's what He's been doing with us for the last 30 some years. And isn't that a better way, Jerry, to let yeah. God direct your life, to yes. give your life over to Him and enable Him to make the changes instead of you trying to do it in your own strength or power? Letting Him take charge, taking over. And 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Wait a minute. What, 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 what does that mean? A new creation. Yeah. That means you're no longer the person you used to be. That's right. You and died. You, you actually died a spiritual death. You died a spiritual death, and God put a whole new spirit in your body. You got the same body, but not the same mind or not the same spirit. Because right. He gave you a new mind, He gave you a new spirit to guide you into all truth. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. we got to remember this, God loved us so much that He sent Jesus to die in our place. All God wants for us from this day on is absolutely peace, safety, and love. He wants us, He said, anything you ask Him, Jesus said, I love this one, I think it's John 14, or John 15 something. Anything you ask in my name, I will do it that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. Well, he's talking about if we do anything that lines up with the Word of God. Now that doesn't mean if we want some crazy thing we can ask, and it's going to happen. But God loves us so much, Jesus loved us so much, that he took, think of this, when he paid for our sins, he took all of our filthy sins on His body, on the cross, and paid for our sins with His blood. Something a lot of people don't realize about that. When He's dying on the cross, and He takes all of our filthy sins, He and God had been together forever. And God looked down, and God could not look at sin. And so He turned His head, and Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? That's what He did for us. That's how much He loved us. That He took all of our filthy sins on, our, on His body and paid for them. Amen. So we're not guilty anymore. No. Amen. So all we got to do, all He asks us to do is just love Him. And let Him change us and set us free from the slavery of addiction. Isn't that right, Pastor? Yes. And we, God, we, we want to take time and thank CTNWTJR for taking this time and, and helping us share with you the difference between recovery and deliverance. It, no matter what's going on in your life, doesn't have to be alcohol, doesn't have to be other drugs, whatever you're going through in life where you're having a battle, God loves you and He wants to set you free. He wants to deliver you from it. 
not only alcohol and other drugs, sexual pornography addiction, eating disorder, gambling, smoking addiction, whatever it is, God wants to set you free. So today, all you have to do is say, Jesus, I love you. Please set me free. And Julie, we want to thank WTJR yes. for what they've done, given us the opportunity to share the difference between recovery and deliverance. And we just thank you so much for, if you're listening and you're having a struggle with something, please call us at 217-617-5577. That's 217-617-5577. We're here for you. We love you. We want you to find what we found. But again, I want to close with this. I want to thank again CTR, WTGA, W C T N W T J R. I got it right in a minute. Thank you, Julie. 16. We yes. thank you for hosting this program. And we thank you, and we just pray for a blessing on, on you this winter, on this holiday season, and even beyond. You may be missing family, but God is your family. He's the one that made you, and, and he's going to create a new family in Christ for you. And you, all you have to do is just surrender to him and just pray, Lord Jesus, we ask you for your healing, Lord. We thank you for dying for us on the cross. We thank you for coming into our lives and transforming us by your power. We surrender to you completely. Thank you for rising from the dead on the third day and ascending to the Father at the right hand and that you're coming back soon to get us. We thank you, Jesus. You said in John 14, 1, 1 through 4 and 6, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I go to prepare a place for you. And we thank you, Lord, that we're new creations in Christ Jesus. The old has gone, the new has come. Amen. God bless you, and thank you thank for you. joining us for this program. We're so thank thankful you. that you were with us today. And if you have any questions, don't forget to call us. And right. thank again, CTN and WTJR. 16. And visit our website at www.addictionfreeinchrist.com. That's www.addictionfreeinchrist.com. Call us at 217-617-5577. And we pray, we'll pray with you and that you would be blessed and find healing and wholeness through Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. And that's your Heavenly Father who's drawing you to Him this Christmas season, this holiday season, this winter season. Yes, amen. Thank you Thank again God for joining for us today. This has been a pleasure.